are ready for our first presentation, the GAL Data Workbench, Bringing Data and Applications to Experts by Espen Knudsen. Espen Knudsen is our Principal Advisor in Digitalization and Innovation. Espen has been in the industry for many years and with Segal for many years, primarily working with products and services throughout his career. Currently, he is our ODSU product manager, and now I will transfer the presentation over to you, Espen. Thanks a lot. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Very and good. you can see my screen, I guess. So we're good to go? Yes, we can see your yeah. screen. Okay, thank you uh, for those uh, introductory words, René. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Espen and I, I work with the, in, in the technology department of Segal. And uh, in my line of work, I, I talk to a lot of clients and uh, I try to, to help out with setting the, the, the strategy of, uh, of where we go with the products and services. And um, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, a mix of uh, stuff we're working on, uh, some observations in the marketplace, and and I really try to 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 to, to explain uh, how we, uh, in a better way, can cater for the emerging job group called maybe data professionals, where data engineers and data scientists are typically uh, one of these uh, job categories. So. Um, Segal, in the past, we've been catering for geologists, geophysicists, and reservoir engineers and tried to make a, a good uh, user experience uh, for them with, with cloud solutions and, and products. Um, and now it's uh, really the time to, to see, okay, how can we do the same for, for those data professionals? How can we uh, make sure that they can work with data uh, in the same way as uh, the other data professionals? How can we make sure that these guys can work with the geologists, geophysicists, and reservoir engineers and help them achieve more with the data? Um, So can I move to the next player? Yep. Um, so just, but first I wanted to say a few words about uh, uh, what we're doing in Segal. So typically we were bringing data and applications to experts. And it's all about creating that best of breed uh, setup where a frictionless data flow from wherever you have your data can then be used by anyone in the organization that wants to consume it. So meaning, from the application side, making sure that the data flows uh, into the, the applications, uh, uh, facilitating for innovation, for your innovation teams, making sure that they get the right uh, data, but also then making sure that the, the, the innovators also work with safe data and, and don't really disturb, disturb the operational environment. Another thing we're working with is making sure that the uh, scientists have uh, access to uh, high performance computing. So that could mean uh, your reservoir simulations, uh, seismic gear workflows, et cetera, et cetera. And all, all of this as a, uh, making kind of a best possible user experience as possible. And in the future, looking to more towards, okay, how can we bridge the gap between these uh, different applications and, and workflows? How can we stop the broken workflows that I will talk about a bit, little bit later? So making sure that uh, we can speed up uh, interoperability between applications and, uh, and users. So how we work with data is, is changing. So in, in, um, in the past, uh, working with data really meant that you had to work in one application, type of a workhorse type uh, application where you did most of your work that enabled that this data was then locked in, in silos and and all the innovation uh, that you were waiting for you could wait for years because that was controlled by the application vendor but that has changed over the, maybe the last 10-15 uh, years uh, where now you are able to, to liberate yourself a little bit more from the application silos you can augment the current applications with new methods like we've been doing for a long time, for instance, with the ocean framework from Slumberge, but even even more so where uh, the, the data scientist and the data scientist methods uh, come into place where you can uh, work in a Jupyter notebook, you can uh, take uh, innovations right off the shelf and, and try to do something really magic within a very short time uh, time frame. 
dashboarding, low code, no code apps, such as the Power Platform from, from Microsoft, can really make sure, make uh, uh, you in, in the business innovate on data that are like you never could do before. So going into the future, so what, uh, what do we see? Okay, we're all working on all of these kind of fancy models that we want to predict this and predict that. And putting some structure around that and making uh, the prediction scale into to the organization is going to be really key. Uh, we will see a stronger liberation of the data silos with introductions of the data platforms, like what we see with the OSDU uh, um, initiative. And delivery of technology will be built in a such a way that uh, you can build workflows that are independent from uh, maybe your, your vendors and you can you can start to to to, to uh, source data through a chain of microservices so it's really from uh, going from uh, the application control silos to a multi-domain data platforms where you get really easy access to data and that will enable really fancy and interesting new ways of, of, of working another trend that we're seeing is that the, the new user group of data professionals, they're taking their tool sets and, and using them on the kind of the, the geoscience uh, way of working. And uh, here I have an example uh, from um, a company called Nine, um, where I just show a, a brief uh, K-means clustering setup. And the, the, the strange thing about this is that you can possibly do this in, in geoscience specific applications. But you you now can download this free to use app and, and get to 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 where you you want in a very short time. Um, obviously, some challenges on, on scalability and these type of things, but it's really interesting. So I made a video just to illustrate uh, how how this is. So what you see now on screen is the Nine application, and it's a K-means clustering algorithm that I just downloaded from the library online, and uh, by just copying and pasting it. Uh, I made my own and I took some well data that I had lying around from a, a hackathon and uh, put that into a Excel spreadsheet. And by just uh, pressing uh, OK, uh, setting a few uh, settings in that uh, setup, I'm then able to, to, to partition the data, do the clustering, uh, and then uh, uh, set up the colors and the shapes. And then I can do an interactive view, 3D script scatter plot with the k-means clusters uh, applied in, in no time and uh, this really kind of from where we are with python today which is could be difficult for some of you it democratizes this space even more where you can uh, you can uh, access data and work maybe not fully like a, a, a fully fledged data scientist but you can start to to use the methods and tools that uh, is uh, mainstream in, the, in, in that uh, user group. With more data, changing need data delivered through platforms and uh, uh, through uh, the microservices, et cetera, et cetera, it is becoming clear to many that traditional data management, so managing of, of, of the data has also had to change. Uh, lots of errors, manu man uh, hard manual work in uh, importing data into applications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so this concept of data ops blends uh, ad working like uh, agile in an agile way with the uh, DevOps, meaning development and operational thinking, with delivering uh, results very quickly to the business, is it put in place, and. Uh, companies like Data Kitchen make platforms to do that, and uh, companies like Segal and others, we can deliver kind of data management or data ops as a service for, for, for clients. With more data and with all these uh, new ways of creating small apps or analyzing data or creating workflows on the fly, uh, it's everything is set for uh, an apps explosion in the business. And, and we see with uh, some of our clients that uh, they're already struggling a little bit with the, the amount of, uh, can I say, um, innovation that uh, is uh, lying around in the organization. Um, because uh, you, you, you have done a lot of uh, good work in innovation teams, but sometimes people move on or, or quit, uh, and then uh, who is gonna maintain this innovation? 
And uh, we believe, uh, so even though I'm a big fan of anything innovation, I, I think a little bit of process and a place to work safely with innovation is in place. So in, in this uh, diagram here, uh, we have uh, an example how we, we uh, recommend clients to, to work with ideation and create MVPs, uh, minimum viable uh, products or prototypes, uh, and then uh, bring that as, a, as an app, maybe from R&D to begin with, but then gradually use this process then to, to uh, either decide to, to, to leave it uh, and put it on the graveyard or take it and make it to, to something a bit more commercial grade. And I will talk about how we in Tugala are going to handle that for our clients going forward. So, so just to sum it up, we see that the way that, uh, we work with data is changing. So how data is served us is changing. Our users capabilities are in change. And there's an explosion of apps. Clients move into new vertical segments that really creates uh, a lot of extra data type maybe even. And that means that how we connect users with data also need to adapt them well, uh, as well. So how can we make a use of group specific data workspaces? And how can we at the same time facilitate for that innovation and, and get all these new um, small applications up and running? So one of the things that we see is that people struggle with finding data, but also to operationalize the data science. And the data scientists typically bring in another tool set that have been uh, showing you guys, uh, Nine was one example, but you can see other uh, type of applications like uh, like Orange or Studio or whatever uh, coming into your application list. So that means that uh, the your IT provider, or in this case for Prozigal, we we need to to serve uh, our clients with a different type of workspace. Maybe not just focused on Petrel and other workhorse applications, but all, maybe some more niche applications that. Uh, could uh, make you work with data in new ways. But also there's uh, what we call modern applications that are coming in. And these modern applications, they, they are typically then um, uh, uh, web-based, uh, cloud-native. They have uh, maybe their own database or their own platform. So then uh, it is sometimes that will be a silo in itself. So how can we break open that silo and make sure that uh, this, uh, this uh, product is then delivered to the end users in, in a good way? So in Segal, we, uh, we have the opportunity then to create a dedicated workbench then for, for the data scientists. And this, um, one of the ways we can do that is supporting these modern applications. That could be an innovation app. It could be a third party uh, app that uh, uh, we can deploy and, and maintain on behalf of uh, the vendor uh, to, the, to the client. And so uh, taking the same principles that we have uh, with uh, making sure that uh, the, the current applications work in the Windows desktop, uh, we also can need to do the same for, for uh, SaaS applications um, uh, that have the same operational uh, needs, they have the same security needs, et cetera, et cetera. So this is uh, something we're working on at the moment to be able to create this uh, new workbench for our clients. Another thing that uh, is important is to, to help the organization succeed with innovation projects. So sometimes uh, the, the internal IT department can be um, a bit slow to react and, and facilitate for, for new uh, uh, digital initiatives. And uh, we are taking an approach in Segal to be able to, um, to, to create what we call an innovation space for all our clients. It's the way where, way where we um, let our clients work and experiment and innovate with data. And it's a cloud native uh, Kubernetes uh, setup that uh, it's a cluster where, where the innovation group can then uh, get a bit more um, uh, ownership of, of data and, and run its all, own operations, all in, in a secure setup. Uh, I'm just going to show a little bit of a, a demo here. So imagine uh, I'm logging into my workplace uh, or workbench and I'm selecting the um, uh, innovation space uh, app. So I go into here and I, I open up a data science environment in a Jupyter Hub. That's one of the prime uh, applications that we can uh, serve via our innovation space. But I also want to connect to data. So 
we we have uh, in our first version connected to Microsoft OneDrive, so that means you can transfer data from your desktop to to the cloud. But we also have persistent data from from uh, from um, inside of the system, like bulk data. And uh, here I'm opening a shared uh, data for uh, Python notebook that I got from Thomas uh, that he wanted to show me. And I, I just took that from my uh, local OneDrive and I was able to work with it uh, very quickly. So one way of showing that we can quickly uh, give power users access to the data they need when they need it. Okay, so talk a little bit about trying to solve some of the uh, issues that people have with the uh, new applications or, or innovation, but nothing really works unless you get access to, to, to data. And uh, in Segal, we, we are typically working with the uh, third parties to, to help uh, clients access data uh, for, from uh, from uh, internal application or from vendors that we, we help to, to, to connect to a certain database, etc. So this is an example of a collaboration we've done with the Cognite. Um, they have a, a data platform that you might have heard about, which supports many different data types. And in this case, we uh, we took an application that uh, we developed in, in Segal called Blueback Avery, um, and we hooked it up to to um, to the Cognite Data Fusion, thus creating a uh, one way of creating a frictionless access to that platform. Uh, and uh, then we can uh, use that single source of truth uh, for, for the, um, work, working with. Another thing, uh, and this is what uh, uh, Sebastian is going to talk about uh, after my talk, is uh, the way we're opening up um, the, the betrayal world to work with Python. And this is very exciting because you can really, uh, with the Ocean framework, we, we were able to, to create uh, bespoke plugins, et cetera, et cetera. But now we can move even faster with the stable API. We can we can work the data live in Petrel or we can take data out. And this enables for, for new applications and maybe even new apps to be generated that you could roll out to your uh, end users. Uh, another thing which is kind of uh, to be released is something we call Sugal Hub. And um, it can be seen as a, a way to uh, access your, your, your infrastructure and data from anywhere. So bundled up with the Python 2 Pro, this means that uh, you can, uh, from anywhere, uh, any infrastructure, um, uh, access your Petrel uh, instance uh, via uh, Python 2 Pro and Segal Hub. And we're very excited about this. And, and maybe in the next uh, uh, webinar, we will probably show this in more detail. So when talking about uh, frictionless data flow, we also want to, to create uh, frictionless workflows. I think the industry is probably still um, in a phase where we are mostly uh, using apps. We are using uh, creating uh, data science uh, workbooks, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to come to a stage where new workflows are created on top of data platforms, for instance. And uh one yeah so one just backtrack a little bit we have uh so and so that will be solving them really the the broken workflows problem and just this is just an example uh moving data from patrol to eclipse back to patrol uh, etc etc so we would like to create means to be able to 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 remove those broken workflows and one one thing that we are uh, working on in, in in products at the moment is a something we call Segal flows. So imagine you're working with a piece of seismic data. Uh, you are done doing, uh, so that would be input here. You're doing an operation, you're doing an output, you're doing an operation again, and then another output. Then you have another attribute cube you want to to, uh, to combine into the workflow and do a, a, another operation. Uh, this is really a, a very cumbersome way of working. And But this has been the standard for, for many applications up till now. In, with the flow setup, we, we can then uh, provide an application framework where we can uh, change this, where the uh, outputs are not uh, stored and only the operation. This really uh, gives you the opportunity then to, to, to get the data lineage. You don't miss uh, who did what. You can reconstruct workflows. You can uh, try to make change workflows on the fly. 
uh, and uh, it, it is really exciting uh, technology that could uh, that is um, uh, fueling, for instance, one our every uh, application. One example how you can use this in a data science context is to use Segal flows embedded in the innovation space. So this is kind of very technical, um, so I won't go into detail here. But uh, look at it that, that you can uh, use this uh, flows uh, uh, framework from your Jupyter notebook or from or programmatically. So that means that you can build your own app or in, uh, work with data using the flows method. Uh, so that means that you will store the way of uh, working uh, for um, all uh, all the future. Uh, and it's uh, it's a really exciting new piece of technology that. Uh, uh, Hopefully, uh, some of you will be using in the next year or two. So, almost uh, to the end of my talk. Um, so, to run uh, to round things off, um, we can set up many different data workbenches, and uh, you kind of uh, uh, maybe understand the flexibility we have. But, but the uh, a data workbench would be something from uh, mean something different from a different user. And here I've uh, uh, taken my the, kind of the resource engineering data workbench approach, where we, we set together a different set of applications and workflows that is important for the data manager. And I, I think this really it, it, it works well, and, and it's a it's a good way of, of thinking when when you try to to engage with the with user groups in in the, in the company. Um, so to to sum up, Segal is uh, all about getting more out of your data. We as we talked about earlier today, we deliver GeoCloud uh, as the workspace for subsurface data scientists. But now we are looking to, to cater for new uh, groups. We are introducing new uh, tools and ways of working with data. And it's really following mm, our clients' ambitions and strategy to, to where they're going. And uh, nothing you've seen uh, today is, uh, uh, is vaporware. It's stuff that we are working on or is in the pipeline. And uh, yeah, so uh, looking forward to, to get some of these things out in the market and uh, getting your feedback once we've, uh, we have a commercial. So that was uh, my talk, Rene. All right, Justin, thank you very much. And uh, I think we have time for a question too. So we have one question here from David Middleton. Do you see the beginning of the end of the large consolidated application packages, for example, the 12, as people adopt more niche slash fit for purpose coding using these new tools? That's a very good uh, question, David, and thanks for, uh, for asking it. Um, I think I want to, to just uh, point to what's happening uh, on, the, on the OSDU front. Uh, so for those who don't know it, that's the Open Subsurface Data Universe uh, Data Platform Initiative. And the purpose of that is to liberate data from uh, application silos. So once you've done that, I think there's a, there's a good opportunity uh, that uh, there will be new players and new workflows coming into the picture. But I think for the, for the, um, for the foreseeable future, the uh, user groups of the companies also need to embrace this change. And as long as most of people sit and, and, and do their interpretation of control, let's say, uh, we, we are kind of stuck in, in that paradigm. But uh, um, when we get um, a good kind of workflow orchestrator on top of us, do you, where you could uh, uh, build your own workflow a little bit same like what you saw on MIME and maybe combined with the, what we're doing with the, this Avery application, then we could possibly see emerging uh, some, some really new uh, uh, cool ways of, of working with data and that could be the demise of, of, the, of the workhorse. Um, that being said, there could be another uh, big player uh, coming into the picture having kind of an end-to-end -end solution here. Uh, so that may be the, the new workhorse, but the opportunity for, for having a uh, uh, really open um, uh, uh, playing field with applications uh, and parts of uh, workflows being catered to, to the end users, that could be uh, the disrupting uh, factor here. <laughs>